A short break was promised, a short break was delivered here at the DPC in Eastern European Division 2. I'm Harry Freak and we're watching a series between Sigma, YNT and Rise Esports. If you haven't watched game number one, it is currently 1-0 for Rise Esports after a 45 minute game that was pretty much one-sided. There was this time, maybe... 10 to 15 minutes into the game where Sigma were looking like they had control after they got their first blink dagger, but after that one, it just went downhill. So, uh, we are, uh, we're gonna be going into the draft of game number two shortly. You know, uh, before we don't, we can uh, talk a little bit about what happened in that uh, in that previous game. Ursa happened, right? You're playing a ranged core against the Ursa. You don't have enough lockdown. You don't have enough protection. We did get to see Hitcher ride, though. Um, I mean, I have to say, I don't really understand the hype after uh, it was... I didn't understand the hype after it was uh, put into the game. It looked dumb and stupid to me. And in that game, it really did feel, you know, just uh, not that great. So, it is, uh, it is what it is. It's, uh, it's a fun spell to see sometimes. It just doesn't do that much. So, uh, yeah, they can still cast an attack normally. Uh, okay, of course he cannot uh, move independently, and so... He cannot be targeted when he gets increased attack range. It's it's really not that big of a deal, right? I, how much it, does it last? It actually lasts eight seconds. Okay, it it could be a big deal. I uh, I take it back though. Okay, you're keeping the Ursa away from him, right? But Ursa has a battle fury. He's still dealing damage to him because the AOE effects still go through. And you have to go super deep in for DSF to actually be able to do something. So, for me, this is an item when we're winning the game. We're going to look un invincible. And we're going to run you down wherever you go. When we're losing the game, it's not going to do anything. Meaning that even when you're winning the game, some other item might be just, just as good. So, I'm uh, not a fan, right? You try. You saw that the game wasn't going well. So, you go for something else. Something that isn't conventional and it doesn't work out. You move on, right? They still have game number two, Sigma YNT here. Um, yesterday, you know, their uh, older brother, YNT, without a Sigma. We don't know if it's uh, Alpha, Beta, or whatever, but Sigma he is not. They did win against HF, so that's quite nice. Sigma YNT currently, I think they're one and one, yeah. They, uh, they are Rise Esports, they're one and one as well, with Rise Esports having... Uh, a better uh, map win than uh, than Sigma YNT. I would say, I mean, I I saw Sigma YNT's players. I mean, they're not bad, but they're not like top tier. Um, you know, looking at Rise Esports and how they've been doing overall, and when I've been watching them, they are. Uh, I would say this is a two zero for Rise. I mean, on paper, but we'll uh, we'll see. You know, you uh, you never know. You really never know. So we are waiting here for the uh, for the draft to start. Hopefully, uh, it does start soon here. Though uh, I think you guys enjoy my uh, my beautiful face enough. It's, uh, me just bringing some joy there to you, uh, to you lovely people. That's what we're here for. So let's see what's happening. In terms of uh, picks from these heroes, uh, from these teams, is there anything interesting that they had played? Sigma, they haven't played Hoodwink thus far, even though that is one of the uh, bigger pick heroes. They have played against the Hoodwink and won against it twice against Puck Champ, so that is big. Their second series that they lost, they didn't play it. They played the Skyrath Mage. They're kind of the, the only ones that I see playing it here currently. So that is... Uh, that is quite nice. It's a hero that you don't see too often. I will say be for good reason. Actually, no. Okay, it was played right now. Yeah, so it has one win, two losses. Um, the reason why Skyrath Mage just isn't good in the current meta is because there's so many auras that are being uh, made. But that's not the big deal. Because the big thing that this hero provides is that silence, right? With the increased magical damage. Some people tend to forget that the Ancient Seal does give a lot of increased magical damage. About 40. 45, I think, even on the... Uh, on the last point, and 
you have so many ways to remove it. Aura builds are being made, right? Pipes and stuff. Um, BKB is always in the meta. Force Staff is in the meta, which is like the counter to uh, uh, to Skyrith Mage. And um, Guardian Greaves and the Lotus Orb are being picked up every game. When in a meta, everything is about removing the um, the roots and stuff. Skyrath Mage just doesn't have a place in it, or very rarely does have a place in it in, in picks. So ultimately, not going to be played. Plus, a lot of these blinking cores aren't being played. You know, Centaur is being played, Magnus from time to time, but that's about it. No Sand Kings, no Axes. Uh, Mars very rarely, but there's so many other better heroes that are going to go with the Mars with the follow-up than a, uh, than a Skyrat Mage. So it does make sense that the hero is not going to be popular. Unfortunately, though. I'm hoping you guys did, uh, did enjoy why Rob was casting. Um, here at the uh, Eastern European DPC Division 2, we are going to be having solo casts. Uh, maybe uh, some day, days me and Rob come together just to uh, bring you the joy. Maybe if we have some tiebreakers, which we're hoping for. But uh, overall, you're going to be having to deal with me or him rather than uh, both of us together. Which, you know, it's, uh, it's not that bad of a bargain, I'm going to say. Not that big of a deal. I'm hoping I uh, will get some info to what's happening with the draft there. Um, we'll see if... Uh, if anyone does give me a uh, any info or what's uh, what's going on with it, as for now, nothing. Um, for tomorrow, guys, there are gonna be uh, sorry, not tomorrow. For the ninth, tomorrow we are gonna have a break. Okay, not gonna be going with that one, but we will have some penalties in terms of drafts from for various things that have happened. And uh, guess what? We are gonna be seeing a tree and protector again. Okay, Rise Esports, they want to be a little bit faster this time around, so they're gonna be going for a Clockwork Centaur. That's an initiation hero, and an initiation hero. And one of them gives vision, so I like it. Um, I do like for the center to have a little bit more burst damage on his side, but you still have three more picks to uh, to get it there. You know, something like uh, Hoodwink, something like a uh, Snap Fire Techies. Those three come to mind. Sigma, what do you get? Uh, they could go for a range core right now. Um, you want something that makes a four staff, because it's good against both of these heroes. Uh, with the Treant, it could be a uh, Drow, it could be a uh, a Sniper. I'm seeing less and less Sniper, though. Um, also, you know, we saw an SF in the previous one. I wouldn't want to see an SF, because he doesn't necessarily want to go for an early 4-staff. Morphling. Morphling is also a uh, a hero that is very good in the current meta. Deals well with both of these two. Centaur, his Hoof Stomp, it has an animation, like, rah, 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 bam. Um, before you connect with the hoof stomp, so you can always respond unless you use the stampede. Once you use the stampede, the hoof stomp becomes instant. So that's why you, when you sometimes see the uh, center jump into you and you're instantly stunned, that is because he has used the uh, stampede preemptively. So that is uh, that is Gaia one thing to be careful of. They ban out the Ursa, which is a great hero against the Morphling. Radiant team it's uh, just a very nice hero to play against. They're going to be getting rid of the Slark. Okay. Rubik was banned. Yeah, no surprises there. Bad. Almost the same bans as the previous game, though. The uh, the Death Prophet was removed as well. So, Rise are getting rid of the um, the Zoo heroes again. If you have a tower defending hero and you have better push as well, Ten seconds remaining. you can just get a late game hero like a Morphling. You are going to be controlling most of the map. Five and if you remaining. are good at reading the map, and it's not going to be too hard, especially if you have something like a beast, you can very easily win the game without ever getting involved into a fight that could cost you a, uh, a game. So that's why you never you never let it through. It just feels so bad playing against it. You need to be a better team. You need to be maneuvering well around the map if the enemies have better tower defense and better push. So that, that's why we're seeing zoo heroes getting banned out, even though a centaur could, on paper, go for uh, the Crimson Guard, protect his teammates. It doesn't matter. It's the towers that need protecting. And those are a little bit tougher. A gets banned out. Okay. Makes sense. It, you know... A faces void AA, actually, I wouldn't hate it. I would not hate it. I think it Ten would be quite remaining. decent against what uh, YNT has. Five seconds Even remaining. though, naturally, AA isn't being played for a reason. 
Definitely for a reason, even though I uh, I saw someone play it on a uh, on a stream a couple of days ago. Ooh, okay. That's a push hero. That's a hero that lanes well with the centaur. That's a hero that we don't see too often. So Arrow is going to be trying to play it. Uh, I told you guys that he's a little bit of an unconventional hero player. Even though this is not an unconventional hero, it is an unconventional hero currently. So now the Morphling will have to decide, do I buy a Lincolns or do I just not care? And I would say you should care, my friend. One big thing is that the Overgrowth does cancel the uh, the Shackles. That is a, uh, a thing for sure, something you have to be uh, wary of if you are a Shadow Shaman. Rasta, as some of us know him. Okay, so you... Now you're thinking, do I get a Spirit to kill this Shadow Shaman? Or am I afraid because he is a Shadow Shaman to play a spirit? Ember was banned out. Why? Out of all of the spirit brothers, he is the only one that doesn't have to go in to do damage, right? So that's why he's good against the Shadow Shaman. Tiny, though, is amazing. But you don't have a, a vision hero. And I don't know which vision hero you can get. This is a problem. You don't have tower push. You have tower push in the later portion of the game. But you don't have ways to take down towers. If this is a mid lane tiny, fine. You do have a shadow shaman to hunt down. But how are you going to ever see him? You're up against the centaur, who's always going to be in front. You're up against the clockwork, who's always going to see you. I'd rather this be a position four tiny. Like, I would rather this be a position four. Radiant team pick. And it's not. Yeehaw. Okay, could be a mid lane. Snapfire probably isn't going to be. Uh, you see this? I would be fine with the Life Stealer, actually. Even though the uh, Morphling is naturally good against it, I'd actually be fine with the Life Stealer. You could still go for something like uh, Terror Blade, if you want, but there is solid amounts of magical damage that you're gonna have to be dealing with. You might get uh, countered with. But, uh... Ranger. So they'll go for the Drow. So the thing is, Drow used to be like the undisputed counter to the Morph. Then they added the Morphling Aghanims, right? So Morphling gets an Axe, he turns into the Drow, you lose all of your attack speed, you lose most of your agility, and the Morphling just attacks ba 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 ba, right? Ten seconds remaining. That is why it's a problem. Drow can't buy a Lincoln. That is what back. changes things. I think this is a... Hurricane Pike? BKB Lincoln's game for a draw, right? And then you're fine, because not a lot of these heroes actually have ways to break your Lincolns. In terms of laning, rise are actually quite good. But uh, I would say that this, uh, this dra these drafts are a little bit more equal than the previous one. The only thing I don't like for Sigma is that the Tiny is... Um, Ten seconds uh, remaining. That the Tiny is a uh, mid laner with no vision. Five Could be a position remaining. four tiny and a offlane snap or position four tiny in the mid snap. I wouldn't hate it, but it's not something as we see often. So it's um, it's probably unlikely to happen. They ban out the Enigma. I would I would ban out the Tusk actually. An offlane Tusk for Sigma would be amazing. Uh, Mars not so much would be okay against the Centaur, but the Drow is. Uh, Drow is that uh, range position one that can get the arrows in the uh, in the arena with the multi shot. That's uh, that's definitely a thing. So Sigma, what are you banning? They are taking their time. They got rid of the bat, which could be a problem against the tiny in the mid. Could be a problem against the staffire in the mid. So we don't really know. Oh, what's gonna be next? Radiant so last pick is back. going for Rise. Zeus is going to be banned out. Okay, you have a Morphling you don't want Burst to, uh, to think about. Understandable. So Rise, what's it going to be? Hmm. I'd get rid of the Tusk. Okay, so they're expecting this to be an offlane snap with a, uh, with a 4 tiny. They're offline tiny with the four snap. The other one is uh, much more likely given what we've been seeing in the uh, in the past. Has Sigma played a snap? Uh, Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Yes, they have played a support snap bar. So, 
We're gonna assume that's what they're gonna be doing right now as well. I speak for the tree. Nature's prophet. He speaks for the trees. Uh okay. Into a clockwork. You know, I said I like their I don't I don't like it that much any longer. This could be a mid lane nature's prophet, fine. But I'm I'm just not a fan. Lockdown on Sigma is very limited. I wouldn't hate like a storm. Like a uh even though tiny is a problem, it doesn't have to be. I would like a Dragon Knight, actually. I would like a Dragon Knight. The only thing that kills you here is the uh, Mortimer's Kisses. That's going to be cancelled out by so many things. But they go for the Tusk themselves. So that's going to be their mid lane. Fat mid laner either way. That's uh, that's what I wanted to see. Would have preferred the DK a little bit just because of the uh, buff of the Drow attack speed. And of course the ability to take down Tower, something that Rise doesn't have. But I I'm fine with this one as well. So it is going to be a Kuropatic. Um, off lane Nature's Prophet with a Snapfire, and it is gonna be a mid lane Tiny. I don't like it. So, okay. You at least have Tower Push with the Tiny. I'm gonna give them that, right? When you have a hero that relies so much on blinking in and killing someone, you. Ideally, want to have a Vision Hero with him. If you can't have that, you're gonna have the follow-up damage and push, so that the lanes constantly go in, and you're going to catch heroes on lanes, right? So you have that. You have follow-up damage on the uh, Snapfire. And you have this Nature's Prophet that is uh, going to be pushing the waves. So I'm okay. The Tiny is an okay pick now, considering their lineup. But I'm kind of afraid. First of all, laning phase, not going to go great. Second of all, Space creating without items, Tusk crushes the Tiny. Also in the mid lane, Tusk does really well against the Tiny. Um, if you play it well, sometimes you can make a mistake, but the way that you play the lane is that you just run into the Tiny and you hit him. He has zero armor, he has to hit you back with the tree, thus he cannot use the tree to, uh, uh, to CS, thus you win the CS battle, right? Because when it does come down to it, it's, uh, it's a big problem. But with that being said, we are going to be going into the game. But just before that, we're going to have a word from our sponsors over at EGB. Bets on esports, bets on streamers, impressive bonus system, welcome bonus up to $600, cashback, artifacts, regular promotions, daily giveaways. Try yourself as a bookmaker. Great lines. EGB.com, more than just a bookmaker. And we are in the game here between Rise Esports and Sigma. We're going to be getting into the action here of these uh, two teams. Rise Esports are on the Radiant side and uh, we are seeing them fighting against Tiny already for you taking some damage. Not going to be anything significant. That's going to be at the Treant. Starting off with the Raid Band. Okay, Van, Van Score. Okay. That's weird. We'll see how it works out, though. Um, he is going to be laning the against the right clicks of the Shadow Shaman, probably. So you uh, you do want to have some extra armor. But this is the first time I'm seeing it. Uh, there is going to be a battery assault here on the Snapfire. Hasn't skilled up anything yet. Might go for the Scatter Blast just to return the little bit of damage. But... He uh, wants to get smacked. There it is. Scatterblast will get skilled up. Bam! Into the clock room of Budino coming over. Uh, Queasy is going to have to get out this time around. It's not going to be starting the game with a uh, with a first blood. And looking at the odds here over at EGB. Well, Rise Esports favored. Not heavily, but they are still favored. As this time around, Sigma, I think they have a better shot than in the previous one. So it's it's definitely the case. But let's see if uh, if it's going to be good enough. So, mid lane already talked about it, Dodron. I already don't like that he's not attacking the Tiny. The second you're not doing it, you're allowing the Tiny to just get every single CS. And you see there, the deny onto the range creep, 3 CS, first wave. Uh, obviously a great start. So Van scored here in the top lane. Shadow Shaman started off with the boots. You don't want to get caught. Shadow Shaman is not the squishiest of heroes, but he is... Uh, now he has low HP, let's put it that way. He does have 4 armor, it is not the worst, but uh, low HP for sure. Let's see. Starts off with the shackles. Okay. That's very weird. 
Let's put it that way. Anyways, though. Clockwork, I, I think I've already talked about it, though. I don't know if I uh, talked about it here in the Eastern European DPC. Clockwork used to be, like, the worst hero to deal with uh, with creeps. But now, when Battery Assault does double the damage to creeps, we're actually very solid at clearing out the Treants. So we'll see if they can uh, they can make that happen. I have to say, so far, the lanes are going well for Sigma. And we'll see if that, uh, if that continues overall. Drow isn't the easiest hero to CS with. But you need to be applying pressure. That's how the uh, the hero works. I guess that's why they uh, they went with two range heroes against him. Triant has been caught. He does have a solid amount of armor. Four armor on the Triant. That's not something that we see too often. Vanskor is taking a ton of damage. Another double edge would kill him. But luckily for him, that is a spell with a solid four second cooldown. So the, uh, uh, the Centaur cannot spam it as much as he would want. Arrow. I might be in some trouble. The Leech Seed is going to be there. With the boots, it's still going to be faster than both the uh, the Morphling and the Treant Protector. So, nothing is going to be uh, happening there. Oh. We're only at the start of the uh, laning phase, so not much to talk about here. There is one thing that uh, might be important that is rotating towards the runes, and that is where Rise Esports supports are much better. Tiny, though, is a little bit better than the, uh, than the Tusk at securing the rune, just because of the Avalanche. So Draw Ranger, he doesn't have the uh, Arcana for it, so Dino is uh, uh, is probably not as good on the Draw. Just as the uh, as the PA Arcana gives you a chance to crit a little bit more um, for the, that one, we are gonna be uh, looking at this Clockwork being taken down. Kropatic gets the first blood, and Black Archangel is that last game. He was on the Jakiro. He was surviving for a long time. This time around, not gonna be happening. So yeah, uh, coming back to the Arcanas, right? PA Arcana, when you have it, you crit all the time. That's uh, everybody knows that. And the uh, the Draw Arcana, when you have it, you uh, you get the uh, piercing shot all the time once you're level six. So. Dino is uh, is not as strong as we thought he would be. Hoping that all of our uh, beautiful viewers understand the sarcasm, because obviously Arcanas, they don't give you any kind of an advantage. This is not a pay-to-win game. Get good if you want more, uh, more MMR. So, uh, Battery Assault, Clockwork, still level 1. Doesn't do that much damage. He might actually get some CS here from Dino. Not gonna be happening. So far, that's only gonna be the first blood that we saw in the uh, in the bottom lane for you. He might have zero armor, but with the living armor, that's gonna be uh, increased by uh, indefinite times. You know, Dyer's times infinite. Still not gonna be enough. But uh, from zero to six. Back with a Dino is getting blocked in. The Treants are annoying. Obviously, while blocking people in, they don't do the damage. So that is the uh, that is the nice thing about it. Tiny taking some damage in the mid lane. Tusk is finally starting to win this matchup, getting a few denies, being annoying to the uh, Tiny, spamming out spells, and making sure that he stands his ground and fights. Trow. Well, struggling, for sure. 14 denies on the uh, Nature's Prophet. Yes, some of those are Treants, but then again, some of the lasses from Dino might be Treants as well. So it's uh, it's not ideal. The Nature's Prophet is doing quite well uh, with Black Archangel dying and being lower in terms of levels than he, what he would like to be. It's, it's a problem. Still, you cannot dive the trial. Not easily, though, with this lane. Blizzy, top lane. Triple ring is there. He's not gonna be dying. Gets into the tower. In the tower, you have eight armor. Okay. Okay, that was close. Closer than I expected. And he almost does get taken down. Will be surviving either way. Arrow does get the D ward here. But his ward is gonna be spotted as well. So now he's going for, uh, for a D ward there. Or it's gonna be leaving it at uh, half HP. Yep, that's usually what you do. So that you're one hit away from denying it. So if anyone is com coming over, you're uh, okay. You click on the ward to see if it has... 50 out of 100 HP, you know that the, uh, that the next hit of yours is going to be denying it. So far, so good for Sigma. They're the only ones that have gotten a kill. They're 1k gold ahead. All of their lanes are going decently well. Even mid lane that they're losing is okay-ish. So, so far, so good. First rune, the rotations from the supports. It's only going to be Arrow and... You know, luck follows the brave. He's gonna be getting that one. Kuropa to take some damage. Here comes the first rotation. Dodger coming in. No TP out for you. He has the uppercut as well. And Kuropa will 
survive? No, he won't. There's gonna be the multi shot finishing him off. No cookie now. On to this Snapfire, and that's gonna be another one. Dino gets two of the kills. The uh, Centaurs, they do get involved there, but in the end, that stun is not gonna be changing the fact that Rise Esports, they do get two kills. So you win the mid lane, you rotate, and you get a couple of kills. A little bit of a uh, sad situation that Dodrin didn't get a kill. Because usually when you're rotating as a mid laner, you want it. Because your opponent is going to be farming, but I guess he'll be fine with that one. So now Shackles on the top lane. Vanscore, look at the damage that he's taking. He has 860 HP, but these two, they hurt. Violent is coming over. Maybe he can try to turn this one around. Juking around the trees. Blizzy sees him. Violent has to be careful. He could be the next on the menu if he's not careful. But he will be fine. Vanguard delivered to the, uh, to the center. And now he's going to be uh, getting into that unkillable territory. But the TP on the bottom lane for Kuropa. Is still now the time he needs to help. They need to save Kuropati. He just came back to the world of the living. It would be really bad if he dies, and it seems like that's exactly what's gonna happen. The shards are gonna be on point. They're going for more avalanche from the tiny. The science comes out a little bit too late. They're going for the chase. No, under the tower, way too dangerous. Tiny is here. They bail, but Rise Esports, they strike so fast. They're getting a couple of kills around the map. And this Tusk, he has just turned around the lane that was probably going the worst for Zerai's Esports now to be the best one for them. This Nature's Prophet is the worst in terms of net worth uh, from the cores on the side of YNT. And the Drow Ranger is the best in terms of net worth on her side. Morphling still top of the chart. Black Archangel will be dying inside of the uh, Cogs. He is going to get sprouted as well, so it doesn't matter. You kill the Cogs, but you can still not get out of them. Dyer's middle tower is under Tusk wants the rune, Tiny is gonna be scanned, but this rune is gonna be going to the, towards Dodger and it is gonna be on the top lane, Arrow is saving that one and Tiny he can't do anything about it, he has to go and uh, focus on the creeps and the invis rune will be going into the uh, bottle of the- oh no, actually it's a haste, it looked like an invis to me there for a second, but I guess the, uh, the Shadow Shaman was over it, so I'm gonna be uh, forgiven, I hope. Either way, now it's going to be a very fast Tusk. Imagine you have this guy that is, uh, you know, heavyweight. Super heavyweight. So if you guys watched the uh, the Thor Bjornsson versus uh, Eddie Hall. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much the weight uh, category he is in. And now he's super fast as well. And they get the science onto the uh, snap fire with the living armor. You're not going to live through it. Black Archangel gets the kill. This Tusk is going to be uh, a bit sad that he's not the one getting kills. Because he is using a lot of his time to rotate. But having the Drow get her level 6, be uncontested in the lane, that's what you want. It's all about the levels for the Drow Ranger. You want the laning phase to last as long as possible. Your Centaur can't die or it's very hard to kill. And... Uh, your drow is constantly getting help from the uh, from the Tusk. I have to say, Dodrin, those are some beautiful rotations. I mean, he did play for uh, the old wind strike. You know, later they were bad boom, but then he got removed in uh, favor of Larl, who I mean now is playing for Spirit. So we just know what the uh, kind of caliber player that is. He did have some uh, some internet issues in, at that point, if I remember correctly. He is from from Kazakhstan. Anyways, though, Snowball gonna be used, going for the snap fire yet again. Gonna be uh, silent stuff, can't get out of the cogs, can't go anywhere, will get taken down. Dodgen finally uses the shards to secure the kill. Tiny's coming over, they might lose Black Archangel for this one, but he's looking towards Dinozabric. He will get nothing from it, so... I just wanted to see... Uh, yeah, Dodgen is from, uh, from Kazakhstan, so... What happened in Kazakhstan uh, is that they had a lot of people coming in, and... Um, their uh, network was getting overrun at that point. I have a, a friend, the caster, Kawai Sox, who, uh, who is casting, I think, South America DPC now, doesn't matter. Uh, I worked with him a couple of times and he couldn't work because of, uh, because of the internet issue. So at that point, you know, you were having some, uh, some internet issues on Dodron and he couldn't play. So Lar replaced him. That is the old Windstrike team. They were bed boom on the... Uh, on the uh, on TI, the Hawk lineup. Speaking of the Hawk, for those of you guys that don't know, he will not be attending the Major. There was, uh, as far as I understood, some kind of a uh, misunderstanding between him and the coach or, you know, fight or whatever. But he uh, he didn't want to play. Uh, no fear is the uh, coach and... and uh, 
in uh, Hellraisers, and he left the team, so probably v Tune is going to be there on the Major, because he's now playing a third-party tournament Dyer's with contact. Hellraisers. We'll see how well they uh, do with that one. Dodron, he's done rotating he's towards the bottom lane now. He wants to play the uh, the top, but look at the smoke. They're coming in. Sigma, they also have Mortimer's Kiss is ready, so this Grandma, she's ready to get the smooches out. And Tiny, coming in. He wants Dodron. Avalanche will connect. Mortimer's Kiss is flying through. He does have a snowball to cool himself off from the cases. The damage is going to be overwhelming. Dodron doesn't even go for a snowball. That stampede, not good enough. And the ulti reveals from Sigma are going to be strong enough to bring down Dodron. Okay, that's quite nice, actually. He should be happy with the uh, with the kill. He has been a nuisance everywhere on the map. And finally, you bring him down. It does cost you two ultis. Not the biggest of cooldowns, especially the Wrath of Nature. In just 60 seconds, it's going to be back up. So Black Archangel, level 6. Morphling, 600 HP. If the Drow comes here, you know, hook shot, push back, 1-2 piercing shots, he dies. But it is going to be the uh, the Tusk that comes over. Can they lock him down long enough? They need to find an angle. Waiting for him, waiting for him. Violent is going to be caught. Push back, snowball. It's not going to be enough damage. Violent is fine. Uh, is there going to be any kind of turnaround? I actually thought he was just going to run away. The shards were already used. Violent is out. Arrow was a little bit too late to the party. Under so Centaur is trying his best to get this tower down, but considering that the uh, Treant is as annoying as the hero as it can get in terms of defending towers, he is just maximizing his farm currently. We'll see what he uh, what he buys. He does find the trusty shovel. So Morphling still topping the network chart. This is big. You need a strong Morphling in this game. The earlier you get your Aghanims, you know, I think you go Manta BKB Ags. Usually, sometimes Morphlings skip it against the Drow and they get a Scotty. But when a Drow is having a good game as well, I don't think you can get away with it. You need to be able to take away. You take away 70 attack speed and 20% of her agility. Literally, Drow is a hero that all of her damage comes from the piercing shot. So what she needs is attack speed. You take that away, she's not a hero. So I would, uh, I would like him to go for the Axe, even though I have seen Morphlings skip it against the Drow and still win. Drow, on the other hand, will be going for a Shard. For a farming uh, farming priority, and of course, you know, having it uh, against the morph is a big one. It is just so cool how these two heroes counter each other, and it just who uh, who's an item ahead and, and stuff like that. It actually uh, makes the change to who's going to be doing better. Very cool. Rise sports there in a smoke shadow shaman has a blink. Okay, that's a uh, brown boots blink. And this reveal is gonna be big if he gets on top of the Morphling Blink Hex. Kills Violent, but he's in a good position to break that smoke and actually live. They found him, they had vision, he has been hexed up. The cookie gets him out, but he's gonna be kept in place long enough for him to die. Arrow comes close to the grandmother and into the cocks. Where's your cookie? The oven just doesn't work as good as it used to. And Shadow Shaman, he could turn it around. Now there's gonna be a nice Avatos combo after the overgrowth, but it doesn't matter. It's still gonna be another kill for Dodron. He gets a double. Thinking about re-engaging that one. And Dino, he is pushing. Because Sigma, they brought their tree and he died. And now they're going to lose two of their towers. One on the top lane, one in the mid lane. It's a disaster. A complete disaster for YNT. Dino, I really like this. That he got involved in pushing the tower. And not just farming the jungle. Sometimes carries, they don't use this time that was given to them. But this is just perfect. You kill the highest farming hero of the enemies. Your two other cores are doing whatever you want. They want, and you lose a clockwork. Like who the hell cares that you uh, that you lost a clockwork? Black Archangel, he'll get that one anytime. You can see he's happy. You know, position fives. They are. Uh, they hate each other. They hate themselves. I think, because. Uh, Last game, he was staying in a Roche pit. I don't know how you're having fun doing that. Just kidding, guys. I'm a support player as well, so I would I would know for you. Coming over, the smoke is going to be broken. This is not the best target to go for. Blizzy is tanky, but he's half HP, so he's not really that tanky. The uh, hookshot is going to come through, and he actually gets the tiny away from Blizzy. Now, Toss is going to be there, but they do catch the tiny there with the... Uh, with a nice catch coming up from the Shadow Shaman. He's not going to be moving an inch. Black Archangel, he comes forward, but the Drow Ranger is here attacking from the low ground. Going to be missing a little bit. Here comes the Wrath of Nature, and they don't have vision of Black Archangel, so he's going to be fine. And this, this Shadow Shaman is actually surprising people so much. And I've... I'm used to seeing it when Lion and Shadow Shaman are not being played a lot. Then people forget that... The, what these heroes can do. You just don't have it in your fingers and you have to constantly be thinking about it, which uh, exerts energy and uh, it is just, just just not easy to do. You forget about it sometimes. 
Trow, not even going for a shard first when the game is going well. If you can get the uh, Hurricane Pike Yasha like before 20 minute mark, it's a big deal. Advanced score goes forward. Piggy, Piggy is gonna be caught there by the overgrowth. And Tiny coming over. There is gonna be a snowball. Blink Dagger at the ready. He's gonna have to go forward if he wants to live. But the Stampede has been used. And they hacks the Tiny beautifully done by Arrow. Now the stakes are in. And they're all gonna be blocked in by the Cogs, by the Shards. And an array of arrows is coming through. What a turnaround from Rise Esports. All coming out from the Shadow Shaman. Making sure that the Tusk survives. Just finds the Hex on the right target. And instantly that fight is over. Sigma, Whitey, they're getting destroyed. TP to the bottom lane from the Tusk. I don't know if you want to be there. Those two, they're not pushovers. Okay, they're bringing in the heroes, but the tower did go down. And it's going to be a science onto the Morphling. He turned into the Tusk, so he's tanky, but he's not tanky enough. Kuropati is going for a TP out. Nothing to cancel it, but it is a disaster. Four heroes dead around the map. Yes, you got the tower, but you are losing heroes left and right. On the side of YNT. Just a complete disaster. And they use their ultis. You know, yes, they are not the highest of cooldowns, but that, that's at least 60 seconds before the uh, Mortimer's Kisses. And this Tusk, he's very tanky. He does not die. Oh, look at the damage that the Morphling took. Just perfect. You know, spread of damage between the Tusk and the Drow. They kind of did the same amount of damage. 675 on one and 669 on the other one. So 14 to 5, Rise Esports, they're looking to end this series in 2. It's gonna make our day very short. I know in terms of work, guys, yeah, 2 hours of work, work, it's not enough, but I'm here to watch Dota. I don't want this to end so fast, but it seemed like, it seems like it, that's exactly what's gonna be happening. The next uh, objective that they want on the side of Rise is gonna be Roche, if they can get it, but having the Serpent Wards, it is... Uh, and it's something that you can easily get. Dasha on the draw. I would like him to get a shard now. I don't think he needs a full mantle. Snowball onto Violent. He um, no, it doesn't have a waveform, but at least that's going to be a haste rune for Dodrun. Link Dagger revealed. Nature's Prophet does have the Aghanim, so the roots are going to be there from the tree, from the Nature's Prophet. They're going to be spreading their roots everywhere. Smoke was used from Sigma. For you searching for someone, Black Archangel, he is tanky. He also has the raindrop. Yeah, you don't die. You don't die if you're that hero. Draw Ranger will uh, die easier. Oh, Queasy comes from a uh, really weird side, so he might be able to get the uh, Mortimer's Kisses into the pit. The Ovan score. He's going to be needing a kiss for his boo-boo, but that cannot happen because he's dead. I'm gonna be hurting a little bit too much. Wood was placed by Queasy. If he makes his presence known here, yeah, it's gonna be a wipe from the map. So the Roche is gonna be taken down here. It's in time, but he gets the stun. There's only three serpent wards left, but it doesn't matter. The Roche is dead for you. Oh, he got the avalanche out, but he made a mistake, and now the hook shot. They need to get him out. That is gonna be a nice cookie, but he has already been shackled. He cannot move. He cannot say or do anything. He can just die to the overwhelming damage of Dino Zavrik. And this is just looking like a disaster. Tusk coming forward. He's ready to break the spine of the grandma. And now the big warrior going for the little old lady, Kuropatic. What do you do now? Because this Tusk is coming for you. You are not old. You will not be spared. He does use the Sprout. He will be spared because Dodron just doesn't guess right. The Shard didn't give him the vision in time. And the Nature's Prophet is out of that one. In the end, you just don't defend the tower, but you don't take the tower of your opponents. This is... Kind of what I was talking about in the draft and this in the previous game. When you have better push and you have better tower defense, right? You can see how Sigma, despite them losing, they can still control the map. Imagine if they were winning, Rise Esports would be helpless. But you are not winning. Um, so Violent going for a Manta. He needs a thousand gold before he finishes that one. Rune. It is going to be bottled by Dodron. So now he's going to be in this. He's going to be sneaky. Let's see how well he can uh, he can find some of these heroes. Kropatic again on the bottom lane. Him and Violent, they are uh, creating a lot of space. I think if you rise, you just go with the tower trade, right? Lif is still ready for Sigma. They're smoked up. They're so well prepared here. Yeah, you're going for a tower trade. Not ideal when you're winning the game. 
But Sigma's lineup does rely a lot on being ahead in terms of towers. And if you if you just equalize that, you're, you're still going to be okay. And also, you also have your mid lane tower to give up as well. Or fight around it. And they are deciding to do just that. Rise Esports. Oh, they have the invis. Modern comes forward. Beautiful shards. Blocking both Kuropatic and Vanscore. He sees them. They do have a 4-step. Jumping in from Arrow. Just be careful. Get the X onto the Morphling. Overgrowth. Keeping him and the rest of them in place. Morphling will get tossed back. Tiny has saved his hero, his carry, but who saves you? No one. The snowball going there towards the base or towards the top lane where the uh, Nature's Prophet did TP to an immediate smoke. They're going super fast there. I, I don't think they were under vision on the side of Rise, but this should be pretty apparent that it is happening, given that no one is showing in the bottom lane, and I Sigma, the uh, the Morphling, is just pushing in the wave, no problem, so Nature's Prophet should not be caught by that one. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, jumping in, Morphling taking some damage, where do you go? You're gonna be hexed up, you're going nowhere, there's gonna be the shackles, they cannot break that one, the cookie will get him a little bit farther away, he's gonna have a waveform in just a second, and it seems like he'll be fine with Wrath of Nature, keeping the enemies in place, Violent will go for a TP, but he gets punched, punching water usually doesn't work, but Dodron, he's just so strong, and I whip the Morphling, you will get stunned up until you die, and Arrow will be the one to zap him to death. So, 19 to 5, Dodron gonna be using the, uh, the whip there on himself to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit faster across the map. They are going towards the top lane. Drow is there. Aegis active for another minute and a half. This game is looking solid for uh, for Ryze, even though Sigma, you can see them having some chance to make plays around the map. It's just because you're making those plays, you're putting yourself out there. You're uh, getting in a vulnerable position. And Ryze are using it to just uh, punish you every single time. They even left Blizzy on the bottom lane. And he doesn't even have a blink yet. He's just going for these defensive items, which I I can't say I agree with it. But I'm fine with it. Because the game is going so well for you. And you're just putting this unkillable beast in front of YNT. And they are in no kind of position to uh, to fight him. So, uh, they will take down the ward. Centaur is looking at the grandma. He's like, yeah, I can't catch him. Might need to use my stampede. But the rest of Rise, they're coming over. The Aegis is going to be expiring in 30 seconds. Violent is going to be caught. Slow down. Does have the Manta to remove the science. But look at the other uh, part of the fight. They're already taking down one hero. Violent, he wants to get out. But a stampede, they're chasing him. He pushes out the Shadow Shaman, meaning that the Tiny won't get that one. But Mortimer's Kessens are flying through. There's going to be a lot of damage. Drow Ranger turns around to fight. Still has the Aegis for 17 seconds. The save. The snowball save on Arrow. No, he does not, not live through this. Even the Morphling Illusions are not going to be strong enough. Arrow lives. And Y and T Sigma, they all die. Only the Snapfire will live. And this is the worst thing in the world. To watch the younger generation fall as you're staying alive. The Snapfire will not be sent to the grave. But everyone else will. Now every single lane is being pushed in. If, if there's one thing, you know, Sigma have been doing well in this game. It's keeping the lanes shoved out. Mid lane and the bottom lane in particular. Top lane a little bit harder. But now when you're all dead, the lanes are just going to naturally start going your way. That allows Rise to go for another tier 2 and actually get even more ahead in terms of towers if they want to. Dino doesn't have the... Um, the Aegis any longer, and it was shown in the previous fight that he can't get low. So you don't want to be playing with your life until you get a BKB. Once you do get a BKB, the uh, physical damage of your enemies just isn't that strong currently. So you're probably going to be able to stand your ground, but this is it's just a, uh, a walk in the park. That's how it looks like for Rise Esports. I'm still surprised that they, uh, that they lost the series against the main team of YNT. Plenty are not bad, you know. I don't know why I'm... Uh, but just Rise Esports are looking You're super good. Washed You're washed up. He might be uh, calling out some uh, some old players. You know. No, hope not. We should respect our legends, guys. Every single one of them. Um, smoke was used by Sigma. They are not under enemy vision. The uh, Shadow Shaman is on the bottom lane, so they're not hunting him. Killing Dodron 
A little bit harder. Black Archangel easier. And he does get taken down. That's gonna be barely, but they finish him off. Dodron is going in. They want Vanscore dead. They uh, will see the Overgrowth being used. Vanscore goes to the other side, but he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. The cookie connects. Arrow does come in. There's gonna be the Serpent Wars there. And Dodron doesn't get himself out. Shard's gonna be good. Not good enough to live. Mortimer's Kiss is flying through. Mwah, Arrow. You're a beautiful little young fella, but it seems like the kisses aren't gonna be doing enough damage. Violent King Bot engaging yet again. And here comes Arrow. He's gonna be turning himself around. The stun from Violent does come through, but Kuropatich do get away from Blizzy. You don't get away from Dino, who forces Blizzy in. The silence will connect as well. He turns around to look his assailants in the eye before he gets turned into a chicken and dies. So even if you don't want to be a chicken, if you even if you don't want to be a coward, the Shadow Shaman just forces you into it. And another great fight for Rise Esports. They lose only one hero. The Drow has the BKB now going for Ascadi. This is just too big of a net worth difference between the Drow and the Morphling. Yeah, really cool, man. That was hilarious. Great job. Sounds like something that you could use often. Radiant are scanning. Big fan of sarcasm here. Uh, Morphling does have good vision. He's gonna see Arrow. Uh, violent. Get out of there, man. And he's gonna do just that. Now the thing is, Morphling Nini's like Lincoln's BKB. So many items to deal with everything that the enemies has. And you want to get the Axe to be able to counter the, uh, the Drow. This draw actually is... I don't need a Scotty. They'll get the Hex onto the Morphling. Avatar's combo is gonna be there. Actually, just the Avalanche. The Toss will come later, but it's gonna be enough to bring down Arrow. There's gonna be a Dominating Streak that is gonna go the way of the Tiny. So finally, they've caught him. It's gonna take some of their heroes to do so, but it is still gonna be a kill. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I mean, guys, have some... Black Archangel again in the Roche Pit. Look at him. He's like talking. He's trying to have fun. He's trying not to look awkward, but man. Just, it's just... He is having some fun gameplay here. We can see that the, uh, that the observers are looking at him as well. Look at him. He is in a party, you know? Shining there with his uh, nice cat ears there. He is having a, a ball here in the Roche Pit. Might want to have some... Uh, you know, company there, but it is what it is. The scan will come out, and Black Archangel is like, guys, if they scan this one, haha, they're gonna have a big surprise. It's just me scouting it out, and Sigmar coming over like, no, they're in the Roche Pit. We have to do something about it. He's just staying in there laughing as he's digging out Mango's Sigma. They're gonna be sending in a Treant, and there isn't even a Roche there. Finally, Black Archangel does get himself out, sends a couple of flares there to, uh, to see where the enemies are. Centaur wants to go for a heart. Once he gets it, I don't know how you kill him, actually. Because most of the damage of Sigma is going to be magical. And now Rise are in a smoke. Awkward. Puts a ward there immediately. They're going to be going in. And that's a dead tree. And the 7 buyback has to go for it immediately. Nice cookie onto the two of them. And maybe, maybe they can take him down. Not maybe they will. Drown Ranger standing on ground with the BKB winning the fight. And just destroying everyone. Dino is too strong. Will the Morphling buyback as well. There's the buyback. But immediately the Manta will be used to escort. That doesn't work on him. Will get disarmed still. Is in a lot of trouble. Needs to find a way to get out of this one. Does have a four step onto the low ground if he wants to use his advanced core. He is gonna be dead. And that's gonna be an ultra kill. Oh, Kropatic, you wanna give me a rampage? Well, I don't want it. I don't wanna crush you all that much. And he'll TP away from the Sprout Sigma. They use three buybacks, only one on Rise. And the question is, do you even get the Roche from it? No, you don't. You're up against the clock where he sees everything. Oh, man. That was a perfect fight for Sigma. Because that cookie was amazing under the two frontliners of Rise. And the Drow just does so much. This is the strength of this hero when it's ahead. This hero, even when it's behind, it can do massive amounts of damage. But when it's ahead, it's just stupid. And he's not going to be going for a butterfly. In the end, he does uh, decide it is going to be the Silver Edge. So crits are going to be coming through. Morphling wants the Scotty. He's already meeting with the hypothermia. That is a lot of regen reduction coming out from the Drow. So Drow doesn't want a Scotty. He needs to have something, something to slow her down. Radiant are scanning. Queasy. I was about to read that squeezy. So uh 
Not uh, insinuating anything here, guys. Anyways, though, you know, he has 4.5k gold, isn't spending anything, saving for a buyback, which could be pretty big. If there's a Roche fight now, if Dino, let's say, dies and he buys back, the fight is over for Y and T, because they don't have that many buybacks to fight with. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. It's not only about the gold here, it's also the experience. Look at the levels on the side of Rise. They will put down the ward, so Sigma, they're gonna know that something is up. That means Rise are going in for the Roche. Hey, though. Still in smoke. Black Archangel is gonna be making this part of the map dark. Good thing for Sigma, the bottom lane is being pushed in, so maybe they can force Rise back there. Do you know? Gonna be going for the Roche. That's the second row. Shard on it as well. Who gets that one? Could be the Centaur. Arrow would be a good one for the uh, for the Shard if he doesn't have it yet. Yeah. So who gets the Shard? Is it Blizzy? Seems like it's gonna be Blizzy. So he wants to steal some strength from the uh, enemies. Okay. That's nice. You know, because... Uh, you will have a ton of HP on the Centaur, and he decided to go for a Lotus Orb rather than the Heart, so it's uh, it's nice that uh, he will be getting that one. Imagine if you connect him to multiple heroes with a uh, with a double edge. Your strength in pieces, so it's also stronger right clicks. Not really that big of a deal overall for a Centaur, though. But it's uh, also more regen. It's not just HP of yours being increased. Arrow will get whipped there to control your snakes better. I still would have uh, wanted the uh, Shaman to get that one. Extra four snakes are actually quite nice. Van score, he has the four stab, but he's gonna be forced into the fountain for 45 seconds. He is just not having a game. That Wraith Band of his not really helping all that much. Avalanche gonna be used on Dodron. There is gonna be a Hex. Hello, Granny. Goodbye, Granny. She is gonna be chained up, shackled, and brought down by Dodron, who uh, has no chill there. You know, Silver Edge at the ready. Now he has the potential to position himself even better. And the damage output, it is insane on this, uh, on this draw. Sigma. They saw him for a second, but he's baiting here. Still has the Aegis Stampede. A lot of things to keep him safe. And Sigma, they don't want anything to do with that one. Lizzie, gonna be seeing the Morphling Illusions. Immediately takes them down. Has the Lotus as well. So, considering that you're playing against so many roots, it's gonna be quite nice. Also, you, you can return some of the adaptive strikes of the Morphling, which could hurt him, surprise him, kill him. Doesn't matter. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So Drow going for a push. Finally, we're going to be seeing Sigma getting some of their buybacks. The uh, Grandma will have one. I think Morphling still has one on cooldown. Doesn't Dyer's have the gold. Or off cooldown. To, uh, to be more precise. Uh, Shadow Shaman. He has found the Nature's Prophet. Tiny's in the vicinity. So this Shadow Shaman is very much dead. The arrow not going to be doing too much. He's going to be feeding those uh, wards as well. But Van score. That's just what uh, what his purpose is in this game. Yeah, okay. Uh, Kuropatej is gonna be putting his teammate onto the dodge list. I don't know how lobbies are gonna be started then. So, anyways, 34 to 11, 20,000 gold lead. Rise Esports on a good path to end this one. They still have the Aegis for another two minutes. And five seconds, if you uh, want to be precise on that one. The Drow is working towards the Scotty. Uh, they need the living armor right now, but the only thing they have is the glyph. Cutting of the wave there from the Nature's Prophet, but he didn't connect onto all of the creeps. And some of the creeps are going to be going through. A bit of a mistake coming out from the Nature's Prophet, Kuropatij, there. He has, he has just maybe cost his team the racks. They do protect the creeps there with the... Um, through the center, jumping in, nice blink out. Coming out for Queezy, but how do you blink out for this? It's gonna be a fish punch that kills you, and they want to ban score dead. I might not get the piercing shots because of this tiny, but I'm still taking it down. Do you know Zavrik? Does he have the four staff? No, no problem. I'm just gonna stand my ground, protected from the trees and a stop from the uh, centaur. It gets the kill. The Morphling might be next. No, they know he can get to the fountain. Let's kill what we can. Dino Zavrik showing the power of the Drow Ranger. What happens when this hero is so far ahead and he's so, so far ahead in this game? 26,000 gold lead. Morphling is begging for help. 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 You're not so violent now, are you? Yeah, he's laughing. And uh, Sigma YNT, it seems like they have accepted that this game is done. 
He's waiting for Vanscore, who doesn't have his ulti. It is just a disaster for uh, Sigma. It's looking like the game will be done fairly soon. They want to give it one more fight. They're going to have to do it without the Tiny. They're waiting for their Nature's Prophet, though. They don't want to do it without him. You know, Zavrik is going to get uh, hit there by the Adaptive Strike, but he adapts quite nicely. No, no, Vanscore. No, he's going to be destroyed again. Now the Morphling has been called. Does have the Manta away from to the side. Gets back to the Fountain. Actually, Shards is going to be quite nice there, so he cannot get in. But this is... Uh, this is just way too easy. Jump in from the center, gets the stun onto the Morphling in front of the Fountain, and he's gonna be resting inside of that Sprout. He does have the Lotus Orb and the Violent. He stuns himself there. The uh, Blizzy doesn't really care all, all that much. Just normal that his Adaptive Strike stuns more. Morphling goes in. He's gonna be punched right now. Dodge and pops the BKB. Violent, he does no damage, especially when he is just... Uh, a little critter there. Hex is gonna be keeping him in place. They just call GG. They've had enough and this game it is over. I mean, even if you wouldn't call GG, the throne would fall in the next 3-4 seconds. So Rise Esports is definitely showing that they're a better team. Probably a much better team today. If some other day they, they would play, maybe the results would be different. But currently Rise Esports, they're looking strong. Other than their uh, one loss at the start. I don't know what happened there, but you know, sometimes at the start, you just don't take things seriously. You might think you're uh, better than you actually are. You make a couple of mistakes, you lose the series. Now, they're uh, going to be winning against Sigma YNT. They uh, won against HF on the uh, February the 4th. So, you know, Rise Esports, they're, uh, they're having a pretty good time. This is going to be their third win. Uh, no, sorry, their second win. They only have one loss, so they're, they're quite happy with it. And their map count is quite nice. It's going to be 5 and 2 after this uh, this series is over. So they're uh, going to be ahead of YNT, the team that they lost against in the uh, in week one as well, of course. If you do have the uh, same amount of series wins, series losses, you are going to be uh, fighting in the, um, uh, in the tiebreakers. Valve was... Uh, Saying that those are going to be the rules for this one. I don't know for Division 2 if it's the same. Maybe for Division 1 it was that way. No, no, no. Given that no DPC points are there for 7th and 8th place, that's why all of those were uh, uh, were kind of given away. Here, though, in Division 2, I'm going to say a $1,000 per place is actually going to make a big difference for the teams. It's actually $2,000 even $4,000 from the third and the uh, fourth place difference. So, you know, there's uh, if we do get those tiebreakers, we're going to be playing them. I just don't think the uh, seventh and the eighth place, those are probably not going to be playing because there's nothing to uh, to play for. Every other dispute to who uh, who's over who is going to be uh, is going to be played for sure. Sigma, unfortunately, they lose. They are not going to be getting a single game out right now. Pretty much what happened against Hydra. So this is going to be it for... Uh, for them and for us for today. Today is February the 7th. So we only had one series. Started at 15 CET. And it is going to be going towards Arise Esports. But, you know, uh, we are going to have a break tomorrow. But on the 9th of February, we're going to have Sigma, the team that played today, play against Cybercats. And then we will have another series played by the real YNT, not the Sigma YNT, but real YNT, going up against Hydra. That should be an interesting day. And that is going to start at 12 CET on the 9th of February. Be sure to be here. I'm going to be casting. It's not going to be Rob, so you're going to be stuck with me. And until then, guys, have a good night and bye-bye.